this is a battery that works with gravity. Yes, gravity. My idea is to try and replace the use of lithium-ion batteries for storing excess solar energy. I'll be trying to do that using gravity, some weights, and a motor which will act as a generator. So let's find out if it works, how long it can work for, and what limits it can reach. When it comes to electricity generation, without pollutions, solar panels are a great option because, well, they provide electricity from the sun do not cause any pollution. In fact, it's zero emission electricity generation. But one of its limitations is the night. Yes, the sun doesn't shine at night, so we cannot generate electricity. Well, to solve this, we can save some of this energy during the day for use at night. Though we already have batteries doing this, batteries also have their own disadvantages. These include cost, batteries are expensive to buy and produce, they have potential risks of explosions and they're even more expensive to maintain. So the question for today's video is, can I make my own battery? So I quickly began to research on other types of battery I could make to store this renewable energy. Taking in mind not to beat any other kind of chemical battery. I sure got the long list, but this one caught my attention. Gravity batteries. As interesting as the name sounded, I decided to find out more. Well, Gravity batteries are a type of mechanical energy storage technology that stores energy in the form of gravitational potential energy by using the force of gravity to raise and lower heavy objects or masses, thus converting electrical energy into gravitational potential energy while charging and back into electrical energy while discharging. This show sounded cool and I think it was something I could build without too much materials. And they even offered a solution to some of the problems with our chemical batteries. So why not? Let's build one. This is my blueprint for the gravity battery. All we need is a motor which will act as a generator, a height structure, weight, and some cables connecting the weight to the motor. So how it works is that during the day, this motor will use energy from the sun through the solar panel to raise this load to a height, charging the battery. Then at night, this weight will fall slowly under gravity, and as it falls, it turns the gear motor, which acts as a generator, producing electricity. With that being said, let's build it. These are all the materials we need. We need a geared motor, some kind of weight, a height structure, some cables, pulleys, switch, test loads, and of course, connecting wires. Put everything together, I will get this. So this is the whole structure. You can see the motor mounted on and cables passing through it. Sorry, I didn't show the video of how I built this, I kind of deleted it, but I'm sure it'll be easy for you to build too. Our final piece is the solar panel, and solar panel is rated 5.5 volts. Okay, we have the whole setup complete here. I'm just going to do a little demonstration of how it should work before we go and test it. So as you can see, during the day, we can use energy from the sun directly. And we can also use it to charge our gravity battery by lifting a load with it. I haven't attached the load yet, but this is just a demonstration. Again, I'll explain from this angle. So during the day, we can use electricity directly from the sun through our solar panel. At night time, this is how we can switch over to our generator or battery. All we have to do is change the polarity. We can use a two-way switch for that. Then put on the switch and enjoy free electricity at night. Now that we know all this, let's actually test to see if it really works. You can see it's working. You can see the light during the day from the solar panel. You can see Tony. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to give this a little help so it can raise the yeah, load because. Yeah, where the output 5 volts and the output 5 volts of the solar panel that outputs 5 volts and this actually works at 24 volts so it's a work that is full potential to reason to without my help. So I'm doing this, yes. You can see it coming here, yeah, right? If you didn't get that, here's what I said. I'm helping the motor raise the load because the motor is rated to work on 24 volts, but my solar panel only outputs 5.5 volts. So, it cannot trace the load without my help. And this load is about 1.5 kg for references. 
but on a commercial scale, the solar panel used will be able to appeal enough voltage for the motor to work at its full potential and raise the load without any human help. Here I'm covering the solar panel with this cardboard to improvise in night conditions so it looks as if it's night time and we cannot use the solar panel so we can get to test our battery and use it for what it's supposed to be used for. Since I have improvised in night condition by covering the solar panel with cardboard, it's time for us to use our battery as it ought to be used. So I'm just going to change the polarity here so we can use it as a battery. I'm going to put on the switch now so it can allow current from our generator to reach our load. So, okay now I'm going to test it to see if it works. I'm just going to continue to turn here. This. You can see, actually works. I think we lost this boy because you remember when it was blinking continuously, so I think we did lose that bug. But overall, it does work. So our patching does work, but just us wait till it's night so we can see it work better. Three hours later. Now it's night time. We can't use the solar panel because the sun has gone down. So I'm gonna put on our generator and see it work. Let's do it. I was pretty impressed with the result this battery gave using these LED bulbs as load. So I decided to upgrade our load and see how much load it could power. This is a 1.5V to 6 volt DC motor which means it operates safely within 1.5 to 6 volts. So let's test to see if our battery could power it. Okay, so here goes nothing. Let's do it. Wow, check that out. I wonder how many RPM this is. <laughs> well, that's pretty impressive. Our battery did power it pretty well. And from the shaft speed, I'm guessing the output voltage of this battery is more than 3 volts. Well, seems that was a easy test for it. I decided to increase the load even more. Here I have a 3 volt to 6 volt DC motor, which means it operates safely within 3 to 6 volts. So let's check to see if our battery can power it. Now we've upgraded our load. This is a 3 to 6 volt DC motor. Let's see what it can do. So, 3, 2, 1, go. Okay, it did power it, but I'm just guessing it was working at roughly around 3 volts, which is why it was rotating at its lowest speed. Our battery still managed to power it, though you can see the difference in the sharp speed of the different load motors used. Again, I decided to further test this battery to see just how much load it could power. This is a 24 volt rated motor, same as our generator, so let's see if we can power it. Although I doubt this will work. <laughs> well, I think this is gonna turn out badly, but let's do it anyway. Three, two, one. <laughs> well, I did expect that to happen. After all, this motor was rated to work on 24 volts, and also we needed some current output, which our generator probably didn't give out. So how can we make gravity batteries more effective? Take for example, our prototype worked for 16 seconds over a 0.55 meter height. Technically speaking, for this motor to work for an hour, it will have to be dropped from a height of about 124 meters. But here's the interesting part, we can make it work even longer without increasing the height too much. Here's one way we can do that. Increasing the gearing ratio on the motor shaft. When we do this, 
the torque needed to be overcome to get the motor shaft to rotate becomes even more. So, the falling load will have to do much more work turning the shaft as it tries to fall, thereby falling slower and working for a longer time. Take for example, if the torque in this motor shaft is say 20 newton meters, and since it takes 16 seconds for our 1.5 kg weight to fall from a height of 0.55 meters, if we increase the torque to about 40 newton meters, leaving every other parameter constant, the weight will have to fall half as fast, and so the battery will last for twice as much. That is, it will last for about 32 seconds without even increasing the height. Other ways to improve this technology are using the depth of mine. Though this thing means increasing the height in terms of depth, we can use the depth of abandoned mines. And since mines can reach up to the depth of one kilometer, such depths can even allow my model to work for as long as eight hours. And since these mines are already there, we avoid the cost of digging up new ones. Again, another way to improve this technology is by using motors with better windings and transformers which will boost the power output and basically improve the quality of power being generated. Overall, gravity batteries could be a more efficient way to store renewable energy. Though they have their limitations on everyday use, they could be the future of green energy generation and storage. Will we see them be used more in the future? Comment your answers on what you think. And if you have other ideas for me, please let me know in the comments. And with that, we come to the end of this video. I hope you had as much fun watching as I did making it. Please do not forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. I'll see you in the next video.